Landerani Trust operates in a rural area in Malawi supporting orphans and vulnerable people. Health access is very poor in our area with just two small clinics and two small maternity units to provide for over 45,000 people. There is also a small private hospital but many people cannot afford the £4 a day. Mangombe Maternity Unit has been closed for the past 10 months. We hear of many women and children that have died during childbirth because of this. This small temporary unit has been renovated by the government. Yes. Um, is it suitable for this area as a maternity unit? Yeah, it's not suitable to this area because uh, according to population for the, uh, this area, it's about 50, over 50,427 uh, people. That means uh, they, they are not in large enough uh, to assist the pregnant uh, mothers. Mm. Yeah. So this one, it's got six beds. Yeah, six beds. Yeah. And so where do the guardians stay? If uh, I think there is no uh, guardian shelter for, uh, for, for them. No. That means uh, when they come to, uh, to look to care the pregnant mother, they all suffer because there is no way here to sleep. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, uh, Toilets? Yeah, there's Where no the toilet here, no kitchen. No. Yeah. Bathroom? Bathroom, no bathroom. No. Yeah. So what's happening to the old maternity unit? What's happening? Yeah, I think uh, the old maternity unit, uh, as it is, it is in a bad condition. Mm. Yeah. So we, the government, they tried to come to renovate that, but you see, the government programs they are not, they take a, a longer time to do. Mm. Yeah. So we hope the government will come, but we don't know when to renovate. Yeah, we, yeah. yeah. The government have renovated a small house as a temporary six-bedroom unit. We've renovated four staff houses with a new kitchen, store, washroom and toilets at the back. We painted the walls and are in the process of putting in solar power. We hope this encourages staff to come and work in this rural area. This you have got a bathroom, a kitchen and a storeroom. We have introduced eight bicycle ambulances into our area so far. Victor Simfukwe is program officer for TransAid and has provided all the training for free. This is a self-sustaining program allowing easier access to the clinics for everyone in our area. Alright, so let's talk about the reason why we are actually gathered here. We are gathered here because of something beautiful that has happened in our community. I have been to communities where people have died not because they have been infected with diseases that cannot be treated, but simply because they have got no means to get to the health center. Diseases like malaria, diarrhea, and any other diseases that if only you can get to the hospital time, you will be cured and will be very, very well. Other organizations have been thinking of ways and means on how we can provide a very sustainable transport solution that could be placed in the community, owned by the community, so that the community can transport themselves in a much more better way in order to access health services. Everything that, you know, every thought that has gone in the past families, they have looked at all these modes and said, what is it that we can give to Chisime? What is it that we can give to Kawali that will be so cheap, you know, but also very effective in terms of transport? <coughs> This bus ambulance must be 
free to be used 24 7. Okay? Want to assure you that whenever somebody is sick, whenever anybody is sick in the community, this particular medicine has to be accessible 24 hours, 7 days a week. A new facility in our community called Basco Aminas, and that's why it is a facility that has come and it is a very, very special thing. Many people don't get to the clinics as they're sick and don't have transport. They wait until it's too late and then they hire an ox cart. Pregnant women also have difficulty getting to a maternity unit when they've started to go into labour and live some 15 miles away. Local committees are formed to support the scheme and they take ownership of the programme. The bikes are free of charge but the community puts in a donation to the committee so the ambulance can be maintained. The committee also monitors each journey in a logbook which is checked regularly by one of our Landrani team. The bike rotates around the people in the committee so that no one person is in charge all of the time. A few weeks after the last bicycle ambulances were installed, we drove past one in use. They were returning from Mangombe Clinic, where the young child had been diagnosed with malaria. It was great to see it in use at such an early stage. Dirty water is a major problem causing dysentery and death in some cases, particularly to the under fives. We're building up shallow wells and installing boreholes, providing cleaner water. Yes, it was one of the first time I was born. I was born and 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 I was born. Disability is hidden away and traditions say that those people are afflicted with an evil spirit and if you touch them that will pass on to you. They are often outcasts from the village, neglected and struggle to keep alive. We're trying to educate the villagers that they are disabled due to medical reasons and that they need to start to support them and make them part of the community. <laughs> Blessings is a nine-year-old boy who looks like five. He's blind, paralysed down one side and also has learning difficulties. He has cerebral palsy. His father abandoned the family when he was born, leaving his wife, who is also blind, and another child. Blessing's brother is 12 years old and has an incredibly hard life as he has to do many of the chores as he is the most able. When I first met Blessing's he was just sitting tapping his body. Sometimes he's put up against a round mud hut which he can support himself and shuffles his body around in circles. He needs stimulation and we're encouraging the other children in the village to interact with him, clapping and singing. Dorothea is four and had cerebral malaria, leaving her with learning difficulties. Her brother Samson is six and was born with cerebral palsy. He cannot walk and crawls on his cross legs. He's also unable to communicate, so does so by biting if he doesn't like something. We managed to refer both of them to a hospital in Nilongwe where they've been having physio treatment. We pay for their transportation costs each month and the treatment is carried out by another charity called MAP. While we were in the village, a girl was brought to us who had contracted measles at the age of three and left her blind and paralysed. Yeah. 
This is Zozo's home where he lives alone. It's open to the elements, leaving him more at risk of getting malaria. He had a stroke when he was about 45, leaving him paralysed down his left side and speechless. His wife left him and his elderly mother supported him. She passed away two years ago. He struggles to fend for himself by dragging his body along the ground to fetch firewood. We're trying to encourage the village to give him more support. We gave him a simple pack of a blanket and some food and he couldn't believe that anyone would care for him. And we hope we're good role models to the village. Thank you. 